How you doing, guys? Um, my name is Grant Howell. I'm a blues man, mostly, but I, I like to dabble in a, a few different styles, but predominantly, um, I like blue notes. This first song I'd like to play for you was inspired by a, by a breakup, which is always um, yeah, fertile ground for, <laughs> for writing songs. So it's kind of a, a kind of wrote it when when I was hurting, which is um, it's what you're supposed to do when you're playing the blues. So this one's called um, "I'm So Lonely I Could Die." She don't walk on me I'm so lonely I can die Well, it gives a lot of good drink on a hot day Lord, I love and keep my warm and I Well, it gives a lot of good drink on a hot day Lord, I love and keep my warm and I But you know she don't want me I'm so lonely I could die yeah. Oh, it's me Baby, don't you want me Oh, oh it's me Don't you need me yeah. But you know she don't want me I'm so lonely I'm so lonely I'm so lonely I could die Shame on you. I do a lot of solo stuff, so um, as you could imagine, doing doing solo stuff, you gotta you gotta try and keep things interesting because, well, obviously you're by yourself, and the the sound can get kind of the same for you know. So you gotta find ways to try and uh, try and get around it. Uh, one of the things I do is. I'll um I'll change tempo or chords. It's it's really a, a basic thing to do, but it can be quite effective in just holding people's attention and um 
And like I say, when you're on your own, you, you really have to try and pull out every trick in the book just to, try, you know, just keep things interesting. So this song is called Shame On You. And I, I wrote the song lying in bed one night when um, I, was, I was babysitting my kids. And my, my wife was out with her friends and I was, I was kind of feeling a little bit sorry for myself. It's pretty pathetic, I know. But she's out having fun. I'm stuck home with the kids. <laughs> but... Yeah, we all have moments of weakness and uh, kind of act like sport little brats. But I got a great song out of this, and um, this one's called Shame On You. Some nerve, trying to play it cool. Come hold my like cigarettes, be acting like a fool. I don't mind you going out, and getting high with your friends. I can see you got some of this son of a lane and got egg shame on you. Honey, I'm the fool for loving you. I'm a certified fool, baby. Girl, it ain't no crime. Have a good time. Sing of you, maybe do a few lines. But sure enough, she called me my buff. Now you have to regain your kid and her own out the shaking and stuff. I'm a kind of a man with a hurt nobody woman who's the ball of you. If I can't get the love and know who's back for what's a man supposed to do, shame on you. Honey, I'm a fool, loving you. I'm a sort of bad fool, baby. change chords on your cats and and play some harmonica um, this song's in G it's um it's a, uh, this song called never be uh, I co-wrote the song with a guy called Michael Barker and um, it's another another sort of uh, act I'm in with called Swamp thing um, so this is a bit more rootsy bit more a bit more um, uh, sort of more major major notes.
Signs of the game, and that's why we can never be bad. But you're better than me. If I was high, you were higher than me. Sitting on a fence, girl, it's plain to see. That's why we can never be. That's why, baby. Yeah, that's why we could never be. If I gave you an inch, girl, I'm gonna take a mile if I was angry and make you smile. Stop on my shoe, the honey, walk a mile. That's why we can never be bad. But you're better than me. If I was high, you'd be higher than me. Sitting on a fence, girl, it's plain to see why we can never be. That's why, baby. That's why, girl, we can never be. Empty, baby, when I look at you, girl, I see half full. But you always push when I want you to pull. Why we can never be bad? But you're better than me. If I was high, you'd be higher than me. Standing on a fence, girl, at the spring of seat, and that's why we can never be. And that's why, baby. Oh, and that's why we could never be, never be. Never be, never be, never be, never be, never be, never be, never be. Never be. Never be. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why, baby, baby, that's why, baby, that's why. We can never be. Never be. I like that song. It's um, it's kind of a palate cleanser for me. Because I'm such a, I'm a full-on blues sort of pentatonic cat, you know. Speaking of which, there's a song called Bad Man. I wrote this song about a good friend of mine from school. One of those dudes always in trouble. We all had one. We all had a hoot or two, mate. Sort of didn't did the work. And <laughs> I'm still good friends with him to this day, and, and he's still the same. He's a bit of a bad man. But he'd give me the shirt off his back. And I know I always got a place to stay, as long as he's around.
old stand and the little baby. Is that your money or your life? You better come and let me in. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow out your life. Gonna bring bad luck on you. You're wishing well. I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. Bad man. But I Use your car, and I take all your money from from your cookie jar. Eat your bread, and I drink all of your beer. And I take me a nap down in your fairy chair. I'm gonna step on over your your four leaf clover, baby. I'm a bad man. Well, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man, yeah. Bad man, but I am. I'm a bad man. Basically a jam. Um, I've got I've got a certain structure there, but all the lead breaks are just improvised. I like to uh, I like to leave things open and kind of loose. I don't know if it's laziness or well, I, um, I don't work out each part. To you know, uh, I like to leave um, leave things kind of open. Sometimes that doesn't work as well. But sometimes you get some really cool, interesting stuff going on, and I surprise myself, and I, I keep things interesting for myself. Um, it's getting that balance of tight and loose, which is, you, you find elements of the song that need to be tight, and you, you must keep those tight. But there, there, there's a parts in the song where you can keep them loose and, and just let it free flow. It's kind of, you know, kind of just, just, just bounce along with it and see what happens. Um, like I say, it's kind of risky. But there's an energy there. Uh, there's, a, there's a spontaneous energy, and I, I honestly believe that um, the, uh, the crowd picks up on it, or the listener. 
Anyway, um, I got one more song to do for you guys. Um, I'd like to thank the camera guys here. They um, made me feel welcome, and Shane made me feel welcome coming here tonight. Um, I must say to Shane, I'm a big fan of Shane from many, many years ago. You know, I used to go and watch their their hard rock band. You know, I was a big fan of Mutt, his guitarist, and he was a very, very fine, tasty player. And I, I, I used to try to rip off as much things like I could. Of them. It's, it's, um, it was sort of the '80s scene where the guitar was uh, was a was a big part of of the, um, even on the radio. You know, it was a lot of guitar music. I kind of kind of think I'm fortunate being a guitarist, sort of growing up in that era, because you you were just bombarded with it every time you turn on the radio. This song is called Strung Out. It's kind of a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a sad song. But I love that chord, the D chord, even though it's really hard to keep in tune. This song is basically about addiction. It's called Strung Out. Mm -hmm. I'm strung out, man. I hung myself on a needle thread. Been self-medicating the demons in my head. Look down my nose, have yeah, my own reflection, condemn myself to a lifetime sentence in a cave. But I ain't waiting around for tomorrow. I'm gonna get a head start. I got nothing but heartache and sorrow and a great big hole in my heart. Oh, yeah. I'm strong out, man. I got glassy eyes, they're bloodshot red. They only see what they want to see, they only go where they want to go. But give me some credit, man, I'm still standing, I'm still jumping, I'm still jumping. I ain't waiting around for the moon. I'm gonna get a head start. I got nothing but heartache and sorrow and a great big hole in my heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm strung out. Oh, I'm so strung out, man. Oh, and I'm tired and I'm wired. Oh, I'm so strung out, man. Yeah, I'm strung out, man. I'm strung out, man. I hung myself on the needle thread. Been self medicating the demons in my head. Look down my nose at my own reflection. Condemn myself to a loud I'm sentence again. I'm strung out, man. Baby, I'm strung out, man. I'm strung out, man. California, that's where I want to be. Passing the sun, 
Gonna have me some fun Like the movie stars on TV Got a barbecue every night We got drinks going on Down by the poolside We're gonna prance around Like them Hollywood cats, man It's gonna be fat, man Won't you come with me Come with me Won't you come with me Come with me Come with me Come with me High on a mountain We're from everything we'll Get us a big old cabin Nothing too fancy Well I big old fire Every night we got stew in the pot just simmering right we're gonna bow around all the mountain folks we can tell some jokes won't you come with me come with me won't you come with me come with me we don't have to do anything baby we can just hang out Pick off your shoes and pull up a chair with me Baby, with me Sail out on the ocean Feel like Robinson Crusoe You can lay us in the sand Work on our tan Take a thousand easy on and down low We got a party going on Down on the beach We got food on the grip Red and the heat, we're gonna fight around all our mountain friends. Party ain't gonna end. Won't you come with me? Come with me. Won't you come with me? Come with me. Baby, won't you come with me? Baby, come with me. Won't The holiday song. Thanks, guys. Alrighty, well, welcome again to the third Sound Free Live sessions. And tonight we've heard the wonderful Grant Hoa. He's sitting here with me now. Um, so, Grant, great set. Thank you very much for coming. Um, let's start at the beginning. Um, I know you had a band called Moss. Was that your first ever band? Our first band was um, with, a, with a guy called uh, Kerry Laleaf, which you probably know. We've heard he's of Kerry, we a, know Kerry. A, a sort of shredder. Great songwriter too. Um, rocker, sort of, in the, a mould of sort of, um, Glenn, you know, sort of Hughes, that sort of, and he, he was actually the first guy that um, that I actually did a proper paying gig with. Um, and from there, because of our, you know, musos being muso, we kind of, um, internal fighting and stuff, and my, my first official band, with which I I brought together on my my own, which you know, I got the bass player, the drummer. You could say that was Moss. Yes, yeah, that was the first where you were the the main, the, you know, the main criteria in the band. Basically, you got them together and exactly. And, and I kind of I kind of count it because I say that's my first band because that's the first album we did with original material. So I think that's where all it starts. Eh? That's I think that's yeah. that's you know that's where we where, where it started for me. Um, I was in a couple of very, various cover outfits before that, but they were just sort of money bands, and you know the passion didn't really kick until I started writing my own stuff. And that makes sense to me. Mm. So after Moss came, was there another band before you went solo? Um... Well, I was I started doing solo stuff um, straight after Moss, the Moss sort of breakup, which um, which is around about the, the early two thousand, two thousand one. And I, I thought to myself, well, I, I, you know, I could, um, I could probably get away with doing this stuff on my own, you know. Um, so I started doing um, the odd bar gig before the band come on, you know, do a 45 hour minute set, 
and, and just basically worked up a repertoire from there. And it was a very, very long process, but great learning process. You know, you, you make your mistakes and from every mistake. If you're clever, you learn from it and you, you know, you build on it. And you take it on board and, take and, it on board, and work from there. Fine tune your stuff and, 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 and you just get stronger and stronger. And honestly, mate, even today, I make a whole bunch of mistakes and I'm, I'm, you never will stop making mistakes. You know, and the, and the, the trick is to keep, you know, keep keep learning and, and keep it, um, keep keep stretching yourself, and and and, and enjoy the, the the whole learning experience, which is for me is um, probably the best part of um, of being an amuser. Now, one of the questions I've I've asked everyone, there's a few I have, um, is your first musical memory. Uh, in the in the sense where I'm playing, or no, uh, just the first, you know, first I mean, thing I heard, first thing you heard that said I like music, or so, or something, you know, it could have been four or five, who knows how old, something that triggered something in you, went, oh, I like this. Probably the the theme song to Ready to Roll. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was, it was yeah, a, it was a <laughs> it was a program back in the seventies, and um, they they it was kind of like uh, the, all the pop songs and the rock songs. And it, it was on every, I think it was five o'clock or six o'clock in, in the afternoon. And yeah, that, that's where was my exposure to the, to, to um, the rock and roll. And because it was on the television, man. Yeah. And it was, it was good stuff. It was, it was in your lounge. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it was primetime TV. And it's long before real TV. And all this was like, we, we only had two channels, man. Exactly. <laughs> it was like on channel two. One and two. Bang. <laughs> and you got some good stuff coming. Yeah, yeah. The Eagles on there, Blondie. Sex Pistols, you know? Yeah. It was, and we were quite fortunate in that respect growing up in that era because we really got bombarded with some really cool stuff. There was some really bad stuff too. And still <laughs> but is, there was some but cool there's still stuff. some great stuff, you know? Yeah. You almost have to sort of sift it out these days too to mm. find, find the good stuff. But, but for me, probably my first dude that I, I realized would probably be, um, probably be Michael Jackson because... Wow. Yeah, I mean he... Because he had a glove. Well, he, he did that off the wall album, you know that off yeah. the wall, you know. And Quincy Jones, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't and that go was wrong. just that was just blasting on the, on the television, and and my parents were always into Motown. Yeah, always into the soul stuff, you know. I mean, rock with you is one of the to me. Well, it wasn't great. wasn't later where I where I developed the the, the palette for rock, yeah. you know. But early those hooky stuff just just grabs you, you know. Motown stacks those sort of guys. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, it just grabs you, man. You. Yeah. You know, they were just grabbed you by out, the scruff of the neck and said, "Look, dance." You know? Putting out hits that um, you know, you couldn't believe that are still being listened to today. I still, li- I still love it and still listen to it. Yep. Which is great. Um, now the other thing, you've just been touring with um, one of our own Kiwi legends, Mr. Tim Finn, mm. um, with your um, great new band Swamp Thing, which is Michael Barker, who used to be um, or still plays with the John Butler Trio. And um, so, tell us a bit about that, so we can hear about how that how that tour went around Australia there. Yeah, well, Michael doesn't play with the John Butler Trio anymore. He's he been he's been quit for about he quit about a couple of years ago because he um, he wanted to pursue other things. Obviously, they were you know they've been there together for a long time. Yeah, much to my my fortune because uh, I'm very very lucky to be catch, to to hooked up with the guy. Um, we we have we've just done about a month over in in, um, in Australia where where we did a lot of lot of, lot of shows we crammed in it was, it was it was quite hectic opening for Tim but it was great you know you can imagine big venues um, big PA's great yeah. sound techies yeah, green yeah. rooms you know rock star treatment and it was a, it was a really good really good ex- experience for me. Um, and and I, I, let me tell you guys that, that that dude can still rock, man. Tim, I seen him grab the crowd by the scruff of the neck and just shake it up, man. And anyone dude, who's wrote a song called "I See Red" must be a good rocker. Dude, he, the dude can <laughs> shake it up, and he's got some real kick-ass, kick-ass band, you know. Yeah, um, great bunch of guys, really, really professional, you know. Really got their stuff together, but know how to have a good time too, you know. They know how to have, have a, you know, we had a few drinks afterwards, and so it's not all business with these guys. But when it's time to work. They work. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what we like to hear is that you know we like to having fun, mm. but it's still a professional thing that you're doing, and so when the time yeah. comes, you you know yeah. got to lay off that or that and do the show and, and make sure it works. Mm. The, the the great thing for me was just the, the great the sound guys, and just 
Kevin, they're huge. And not worrying about it when you show up. Oh, I just have to plug exactly. in and play, man. Exactly. You know, I just have to concentrate on what I want to do. Exactly. Instead and of setting it up, doing all the sound checks, which can be draining yeah, for anyone yeah. who's a singer-songwriter. And it's it's like a magnet. Uh, uh, they just throw out such a huge... So you, you're there doing your stuff, and I, I might play an A chord, and it just sounds boom. massive. You know, just... Like, hmm, boom. Wow. Loving it. Really cool, really cool. Now, if you had to put yourself in a box, which I know you don't, and most musicians, would you be a singer, a songwriter, or a musician? You have um, to choose one. Well, I'm kind of, I'm, 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 I'm all three. I know you are, but you have to choose one. It's one of those weird questions where... Um, I, I would have to say musician, because that encompasses all. See, first guy to say that so far. Yeah. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> It's all right, I'm laughing, I'm allowed because it's television. Um, other thing I always ask everyone is, you know, we all have our influences, but I'm more into the Aotearoa thing, which is, who are your Kiwi, who do you, you know, as a New Zealander growing up in this country, who are the, the Kiwi artists that you just go, wow, you, you know, either now or when you were growing up? Probably when I'm growing up, it would have been definitely guys like Dave Dobbin, um, uh, Hello Sailor, um, you know, the, the the stock standard icons of, of the industry. Yeah. Um, and as I as I get older, I I, I know they kind of they kind of set the bar pretty high. You know those guys, and, and I'm, I'm looking. I'm in the modern era. I'm looking for dudes that sort of come up to that lit and that that kind of stratosphere. And they've kind of been fewer and far between. They have been, haven't they? Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, pro yeah, pro you know, Hello Sailor, Dave Dobbin, on, on the more, on the soulful, soulful note, I always thought Sunny Day was fantastic. Oh, and I've been watching a lot of Sunny Day. Artie Jenner? I mean, Artie still Jenner. going today, man. You know, Polyfunk, man. Uh, they Jenner. invented their own little sound, which I found they, they were, Kiwi. Yeah, they were huge, but by that time, Adija come around, I was into the rock thing. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I, was, I wasn't really sort of going down that, that sort of, that track. I was, I was hard going into rock. And, so not so much Adija, more, more of the, probably the generation before them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dobbins and the, and the, and the Graham Braziers and so forth. Exactly, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Now, the final brilliant question. <laughs> You're on a desert island. You're stuck there for the rest of your life. You have food, you have water, you have a record player. You're only allowed five albums for the rest of your life. Whoa. Which ones do you take with you? Grant? Well, that's a big question, man. I mean, that requires a bit of thought. That's all right, we have time. <laughs> well, I, I guess I, I'll tell you the, the albums that really kicked my, my ass growing yeah. up. And even though I don't listen to them much now, but they had such an impact on me growing up. I, I, I'll tell you those. One would be Back in Black, Lacey DC, because uh, when that album came out, man, I mean, every song yeah. was just like an anthem. Um, Texas Flood, Steve Ray Vaughan, 1983. Round about the same time as Back in Black. Yeah. Mm. And there were some really good Two stuff. Two different there. styles altogether there, man. At the same time, Thriller, Michael Jackson. Yeah. I think that was 83, 84. Um, as my, my palate changed, I got older. I would have to say Love Over Gold because I was, I was a big fan of um, Dire Straits because I was right into... I love Love Over I think that's the best album, in my opinion, by the way. Yeah. Telegraph Road, come on. Yeah, Love Over Gold. And my, my final album, I, gee, I don't know. It's, there's so many great ones. For the, for the ones I listen to the most... Um, Um, gosh, um, it'll be probably, probably be a toss up between, um, oh, there's, there's a, there's an old album that you guys probably haven't heard of, and it's called Fandango, and it was a ZZ Top album, really early. Right, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Really early ZZ Top, which is just, that Texas blues, the, the first, you know, with distortion, and slide guitars and, and great vocals, three piece stuff. I've always been drawn to three piece kind of music. So it'll be a toss up between Fandango and, mm, let me think. 
You haven't got any blues in there yet, Brian. These are all kind of, kind of well, Texas Flood for me. Started right. the yeah. Started the journey into the blues, so that sort of sort of took me back. I don't know. I mean, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, there was, yeah. You, you're a bit of a John Lee Hooker fan. John Lee Hooker. <laughs> And are we all? Yeah, but it, it did, not not so much as it sh it sort of shook my world. Um, yeah, I'd, ha I'd have to say, um, yeah, it'll probably the, what, what I listen to the the most would be um, I don't know. I, I listen to a lot of Eagles, you know. Um, oh, we can cut that. No, I'm <laughs> well, the, you know. Did I say that live? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I listened to a lot of Eagles. Now, the up. Eagles were great in the early days. I mean, they, they were, everyone they, has they, to admit. I mean, they were Linda Ronstadt's backing band to yep. start off with. Let's be honest. But honestly, my my my, my nana used to have this great old album. It was a Nat King Cole album. Ooh. And growing up, I just listened to it. And I, I think it was a, it was a Lazy Hazy Crazy Taste of Summer. Yeah. And probably that would be my if if I had to uh, had to answer the question of what how many hours have I spent learning a particular album? There's too many, but yeah. you can. Yeah. That's probably where I spent most of my time listening. Wow, Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole. I mean, that's taking you back once again, you know. I mean, that, that's you can't get much earlier than that for a... Well, I, st I still marvel at him. I, I, yeah, I, no, I just, it's, it's, his, his voice and his playing, he's so sparse with what he does. And when, when he plays piano, he's just so sparse. And But so when you're so sparse, the, the notes seem to mean more. You know? Exactly. You know, same with the singing. I thought, you know, Unforgettable, once again, is one of the greatest... I think vocals ever because he's so laid back. People real don't realize how good he's actually singing it because you know he just does it so. You know, it's all about the feel again, isn't it, Grant? Just a beautiful, beautiful musician, beautiful, beautiful singer, beautiful songwriter. Yeah. And now, just to finishing off, now what's on the agenda for you? So you can let people know. I mean, can they contact you on Facebook if they want to know sure. about gigs and um, tell us what's coming up in the near future for you? Please, um, you know. I'll um, if you want to get in touch with me, get on get on the Facebook and and friend me, and I'm, 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 I'll be cool to let you know what I'm up to, what I'm doing. Got a re really busy summer coming up. I'm I'm, well, I'm off to um, Australia for the better part of January and the end of December. I'm doing a lot of festivals over there, and, um, doing a few sort of festivals in in, um, in the local area, Rotorua. So please, um, just yeah. Get in touch and keep in touch, and I'm, I'm glad to say hi and um, how you doing. So, yeah. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the wonderful Mr. Grant Hoa, and um, I'm Dorcas McManus, and I'm um, Soundry <laughs> sounding out. Adios. Love your work. <laughs>